In this lecture, we're going to discuss uh, the third type and also the last type of common triaxial test, uh, that is the uh, unconsolidated undrained triaxial test. And as, as a special case of UU test, we're going to also briefly talk about unconfined compression triaxial test. So first, for the unconsolidated undrained triaxial test, uh, for remember, there are generally there are two stages in a, a typical triaxial test. For a UU test in stage one, when uh, you apply the chamber confining pressure th sigma three, you keep the drainage closed, so there's no drainage allowed. Thus, the sample is not allowed to consolidate. So that's why it's called unconsolidated. And in the second stage, you apply axial loading to shear the specimen to failure. And by this axial increase of axial load is the divitor stress delta sigma d. In this shearing stage, the drainage is also prevented. So you keep the drainage close, and thus you're shearing the sample or you're shearing the specimen to failure in an undrained condition. So that's called undrained triaxial test. And because you don't need you don't allow the excess pore water pressure to dissipate, you don't allow drainage during these two stages, uh, UU test can be performed relatively quickly. So it's, that's why it's also called a Q test, Q for quick. And then the total pore pressure generated during a UU triaxial test has two components. So the first part, B times sigma 3. So this part is uh, basically, the excess pore pressure generated during the stage one when you apply the chamber pressure, uh, chamber pressure sigma three, and this is basically U C. And the second uh, component here, A bar times sigma one minus sigma three. So that's the excess pore, pore pressure generated during stage two when you are sharing the specimen to failure, and this is basically what we called delta U D before. And B and A bar here are Skempton's pore water pressure parameters. So that's basically a general procedure of a UU triaxial test. This unconsolidated undrained triaxial test is typically conducted on clay specimen and depends on a very important strength concept for cohesive soils if it, they are fully saturated. That is uh, for saturated cohesive soils, like saturated clays, the divitor stress at failure, delta sigma df, is practically the same regardless of the chamber confining pressure sigma 3 applied. And so this concept can be illustrated uh, with this figure here. So this figure basically shows the total stress more circles at failure for different specimens. And because the divitor stress delta sigma d is the same for all these uh, specimens, then the radius of the Mohr circles are basically the same as well. So remember, the radius of the Mohr circle is 1 over 2 sigma 1 minus sigma 3, which is basically 1 over 2 delta sigma d f. So if this divitor stress at failure is the same, Regardless of your confining pressure sigma 3, so you have different values of sigma 3, each corresponds to a different specimen. So if delta sigma d is the same, the Mohr circle, the radius of the Mohr circle is the same. Then the failure envelope, if you fit a straight line through these Mohr circles, the points of, at failure of these Mohr circles, that line is going to be a horizontal line. So this is the failure envelope. And the angle of this failure envelope with respect to horizontal axis is the friction angle, total stress friction angle. And because it's a horizontal line, so phi is zero. So this is called phi equals to zero condition. If you plug in the equation for more failure, more coolant failure envelope, which is tau f, so for this failure envelope, tau f equals to C plus sigma times tangent of phi, and if phi is zero, 
then tau f is simply the same as c. So for this phi equals to zero condition, we have tau f equals to c, and this c is defined as c sub u. It's called the undrained shear strength, and it's equal to the radius of the Mohr circle, which is one over two times the divitor stress at failure. And in our unconsolidated undrained tracks, it has the major and minor principal stresses, or the effective major and minor principal stresses, sigma 1 prime and sigma 3 prime are basically their total stress counterpart minus the excess pore water pressure delta ud at failure. Also, as noted on this slide, this V equals to zero condition is only applicable to saturated clays and suits. The last type of triaxial test is an unconfined compression triaxial test. And this is a special UU triaxial test where the confining pressure, sigma 3, is zero here, which means you don't actually apply chamber confining pressure. So this is, um, you can really shear the specimen to failure very quickly. So you don't need to apply confining pressure, sigma 3. Just load up the specimen and shear it to failure. So for this UC test, again, you have that phi equals to zero concept. And this is for, again, saturated cohesive soils. And we have the shear strength tau f equals to Cu, which we just defined uh, as the undrained shear strength. And also we can define this unconfined compression strength, Qu. So Qu is basically two times Cu here. So Qu, the unconfined compression strength, is two times Cu. And in this UC test, this QU equals to the radius, I'm sorry, the diameter of this Mohr circle, and also equals to this axial stress or major principal stress, sigma 1 at failure. Shown on this slide are also two pictures of uh, basically two soil specimens failed in uh, unconfined compression triaxial test. The top one is the specimen failure by shear, and the top bottom one is specimen failure by bulging. So for the top one, you can clearly see this inclined shear plane, this failure plane. And for the bottom one, there's no unique shear plane, and you can notice how uh, you notice there is an expansion or bulging of the soil specimen, and there are some weaker planes in of Excessive, excessive uh, shear uh, deformations. So that's the unconfined compression triaxial test. So again, this is a special UU test, and both the uh, undrained shear strength CU and the unconfined compression strength QU are important strength parameters for cohesive soils. Now this table here, table 12.6, summarizes a uh, general relationship of consistency and the unconfined compression strengths of clays. So basically for very soft, so on the left hand side, the consistency descriptions are relatively qualitative description. So for very soft clays, for instance, the unconfined compression strength QU is from 0 to 25 kilonewton per meter square, relatively small. And as you move down this table, for very hard, very stiff or hard clays, the QU values are larger say, than 400 kilonewton per meter square. So again, this relates some more qualitative description of clays to more quantitative unconfined compression strength values.